Think the docks are gonna hold us? All right. Pretty creaky docks. And there's the boat. Yep, she's definitely down. Looks like she's probably even up underneath the dock. What's left of the dock. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marine. If you're new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now today's video, we got another boat salvage lift here. And this one's gonna be a little crazy for us, not because it's a difficult lift, but one, we're gonna have to partner with Seto again, just because it is a little bit larger than what we have the capabilities to do. But the other problem we're having is the dock system that we're on. The dock system that we're on is, well, let me just show you. Guys, these docks are very, very unstable. They're unlevel, they're, they're not even, as you can tell, they're basically just falling in. And now, as far as we're concerned, us as the divers, we're gonna be up underneath the water. It's not that big a deal to us, but for our surface crew and for CETO, it's gonna be a hazardous situation for them to work on. And so this is, this is gonna be a, a chore for us by, by all means. You do notice that this um, lift bag is already attached. We didn't actually do this. The gentleman's boat that sunk here, uh, he's pretty much called everybody and, and their brother to come out and get this boat up and a local dock builder attempted to get it up as well and with with no luck. So that, that bag actually belongs to the dock builder. But like I said, we're going to team up with Seto today and we're going to see if we can get this thing up for him. I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to stabilize it here on the bow eye. Either put two 1000s or two 2000 pound lifts. And then based off what our initial inspection is, we're going to try to put a couple bags on the stern and lift it up. Uh, I know this boat sits up out of the water quite a bit, so just to get it up high enough that we can start pumping shouldn't be an issue. Um, but we're we're going to be careful because, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I want to go underneath this vessel because it's still temporarily tied to the docks here. But the docks are not very stable at all. So we're going to get geared up. We're going to jump in and see if we can have a successful salvage. So we're going to start this salvage out with uh, just a small little clip here to show you what the vessel looked like before we actually started working on it. As you can see, it is completely submerged, but it was still attached to the dock on the stern, and it's pretty much just ripped that dock underwater. And then, of course, this is what it looked like when we started the operation. It bro finally broke the ropes free from the uh, stern of the vessel and the dock itself, which that's what actually sheared these docks all to pieces is when it went under. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do is, of course, get up with CETO and we're going to develop a game plan. We're going to jump in, do an inspection, see what the overall condition of the vessel is, and then kind of go from there. But this is Ryan. This is one of the owners here at CETO. And what we're doing now is just kind of discussing our main objective of getting a boat up. But we're going to coordinate it to where we can bring the stern of the vessel up to make where it's flush with the bow and then bring it up evenly and go ahead and have all our lines and everything ran, get all our bags attached, and even get our pump lines installed before we even start um, start really trying to move much. But it's time to go ahead and jump in and do the inspection. And I want to apologize, guys. I didn't take an underwater camera with me on this dive, so we're actually going to use this video to kind of show you what the surface crew does while we're in the water. Um, but once I get in and I start the inspection on it, I can kind of tell them where we need to set the bags, where we need to run lines to and then I even swim up in the cabin area of this of uh, this vessel as well just to see uh, where we need to put the pump lines and things like that but once I get the inspection done we'll go ahead and attach the bags which you can see here we've got some bow bags and you'll notice they're already basically out of the water um, since the bow is floating it still has air in it um, and we do have all the windows and doors sealed off. We're not too concerned if it goes underwater during the lifting phase. All we're going to use those front uh, bow bags for is just stabilization, nothing more, nothing less. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, um, and start lifting up the stern. We've got several thousand pounds of lift on the stern. It's usually the heaviest part because of the engine. 
and you can see we've already got our pump lines in they're actually running uh, and pumping water now yes we're still taking on water so they're not doing much but one of the benefits here is once we get the stern up high enough then of course we don't have to struggle to get these pumps going um, while it's still technically taking on water at that point they're already running they're already pumping water so once the stern is up we're no longer taking on water then they can kind of do their thing now myself and one of the other salvage guys we are on the front of the vessel now just kind of keeping it balanced and stable um, if we feel it starting to list one way or the other we can kind of shift our weight around to help it out but our main goal is keeping it balanced getting it pumped out as quickly as we can and just keeping it stabilized You'll slowly see that the vessel starts coming up. There you can see the vents are completely out of the water. They're just above the yellow lift back there. And we are pretty much on the home stretch at this point. All that's left is continuing to pump the water out. And you can see there on the front too, those bags are now underwater, uh, those front bow bags. We didn't want to put them too far under. Uh, we wanted to just keep it stabilized as we're pumping it up. We're going to continue to pump it on up until we get it floating on its own, which virtually it is now. We're just getting the last little bit of water uh, out of the cabin area, and that was the water that kind of rushed back in as it was coming up. But as, as you can see, vessel's floating. All we got left now to do is simply tow it around and get it out of the water. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I know it's kind of short, and there wasn't hardly any, if any, underwater footage whatsoever. Once again, I apologize for getting my cameras but uh, I wanted you guys to kind of see what our surface crew goes through. And a lot of times when we lift vessels like this, the longest part and the hardest part is sitting there and being patient while the vessel's being pumped out. And that's what our surface crew is very good at. And we really enjoy partnering with CETO because those guys are experts. Guys, if you don't have a CETO membership, get you a CETO membership. Another thing I want to talk about at the end of this video is if you've got a vessel in the water, you need insurance on that vessel. Insurance is relatively cheap. You can check with your homeowner's insurance and you can add to that policy. And I've, I've seen it as cheap as $120 a year. That is simply $10 a month to cover your vessel. I know a lot of you guys want to know what we charge to do salvage work. And it's, it's a pretty good penny. We make a pretty decent living doing this. But in the long run, it's cheap for you to simply pay, say, the $120 for insurance a year, $10 a month, versus paying the several thousand dollars that you're going to pay us to get your boat up when it sinks. So guys, if you got a vessel in the water, definitely go get insurance on it. Be safe out there. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. Give CETO a love too. I'll put some information down below. If you're on the water, get you a CETO membership. It'll pay off in the long run as well. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.